Okay, again. <laughs> we scrapped a lot of what we did for the metro grids and basically first we want to reframe again what we're doing. So we start by again thinking about what world we want to build a university for and what trends that we see that are important that we want to the university to respond to and also what what the trends that we see in the world might enable the university to do that the university can't do at the moment or before, right? And so again, like we, we stuck with a lot of the world building that we did. So we we really see the world as becoming more complex. Um, and we also see the world as becoming your people's experiences becoming more heterogeneous and more diverse that will cross disciplines and fields and and basically professions rather than just narrowly focused single track. So like we, we envision people's track to be become more multi-track. And um, we also envision a world where the capability of technologies, of algorithms, computers, digitalization will allow permutations of the education experience to exist that doesn't exist before because the human mind can't manage the population um, that the machine can. So basically we start with that and then we say what we want the university to do, what are the value propositions that we have. And the biggest value proposition that we had was that the university go to college as a time to explore. It's not just an instrument of time to acquire skills and knowledge to do something afterwards, but also to go find who you are, what you want to do. And from that, we basically developed this new model that I think um, will respond to a lot of the list of basic considerations that we have to put into it. And I think Ben will explain the parameters of that. Sure. Uh, what, uh, the, the way we try to approach this is as a question of um, how, how can we maintain uh, independent formative paths of education uh, with some sort of continuity of structure. And out of this, we, uh, working with Andy, we pretty much came together with three different opportunities. Um, uh, one being a fully uh, entrepreneurial pathway, a semi-entrepreneurial pathway, and one um, seeking to grow into entrepreneurialism. Uh, in, in, in the sense, um, in, in the sense of there being um, students coming to college at different levels. Uh, so uh, we we have our uh, foundation here, which I'm going to go into later. But just in the sense of uh, as uh, different students come and seeking different things, uh, I know as a uh, gov major, I came in here along with. 500 other students all think we we're going to be president of the United States, and along with 500 other students did the Capitol Hill internship. And, and that is a very, uh, that could be a easily, um, an uh, easily templated um, time in university. Where, whereas when you have somebody else with perhaps a more realistic and uh, specified field of, it, field of interest, there, there could be, there's much more opportunity to pave your own independent pathway. Uh, and, and I think we came to grips with this around the idea of uh, authored pathway, a self-authored pathway with mentorship. The idea that uh, if you have an idea of where you want to go, you could certainly follow that. Uh, but if you're more open, more, more exploratory in your first years, uh, you'll be paired with an individualized mentor that will help you find uh, a path that best that fits you as you delve further and further into new interests. Okay, so you might be wondering, what is this weird squiggle that a two-year-old could have done? So we're going to explain what exactly this is. This is definitely a macro level view of what we imagine the new system to look like that is structured on the idea of these three different types of pathways, the going from non or like growing into entrepreneurialism <laughs> to very um, entrepreneurial. So we start off, like all students do, in this black circle here with a lot of colored lines and some objects. So what that is, is freshman year, what we're calling foundation year. So foundation year is sort of inspired by a lot of art schools where regardless of what your major is, you take a whole bunch of different classes and a whole bunch of different studios so that you get a good grounding of what the different options are and also as you see the interconnectedness of those different things. 
So what we looked at was how are we, if we could somehow pare down like what it was, those threshold concepts, knowledge, skills, and dispositions, that we wanted every freshman or every person stepping into Georgetown to just have a baseline level of, of what would those be. So we, again, we divided into three categories, circles for skills, um, square, uh, squares for knowledge, and triangles for dispositions. Dispositions. I could be wrong about this, and I will be correct, correct myself in the next slide if I am. But basically, three different types of distinct, um, I think, I guess, competencies that we believe everyone should have. But what we were really interested in was the delivery of these competencies. So what we just designed, and I say designed in the most loose sense of the term, because we're just going to say we designed the game and not tell you any more about it, because we have to follow it through. But what we want is freshmen to come in and spend a year not really making classes and instead playing this massive game using DC as their playground where they have this maybe like 35 different competencies that they need to hit at some point freshman year. So it sort of to them will seem very unstructured and very aspiratory, but to us we, we were, were going to be really, really intentional about it so that people each take these different pathways but lead to all of these same baseline like skills, competencies, and dispositions. So that's what freshman year is going to look like. Uh, the goal is to move from freshman year to senior year, where you'd be in any of the advanced humanities or advanced studios, which are these colored circles. And those sort of, again, lead us back to what Ben said about the three different pathways. So in certain things, right, like this red circle here, you see uh, three sets, sorry, five sets of squiggly lines leading <coughs> to the studio. And what that is, is this is obviously a community of practice pathway, something which is about growing into entrepreneurialism. So if you're a lawyer, if you're an architect or a med student, if you're any of those things where you actually need a very distinct like, skills, knowledge, and disposition, here is the sort of pathway that you have to take, and this is the studio that you eventually reach. And it's structured in a way that gives you all the necessary knowledge that others have predetermined as essential to those communities of practice. Then there are the more blended pathways, where you have, like, as you can see, that these people are somewhat similar. I'm trying to sort of use the gradation of coloring to suggest that. So these people, all these four different students, have similar parts. They have looked at like the blended option where they know there are certain things that are required. Perhaps they could all be interested in the environment, but they could be interested in different aspects of the environment. So their pathways are different and their ultimate studios look a little different from one another, but are ultimately pretty similar. They all have something in common. But then you have the rebels. You have the orange, you have the purple, you have the green, that sort of just decided, well, we're going to do whatever we want and make our own pathway entirely. And they created their own studios and they created their, their own path completely into deciding like, what they wanted to learn and what they wanted their university experience to look like. Yeah. So this is, like, if you look at the what we call the advanced studios, this is what it breaks down to. So um, when we were talking to Anne, we talked about like whether or not you could break down the things you were learning in a studio into things that um, you needed to know before you came in or could be almost like outsourced and things that were outcomes um, for, of being in the studio. So we sort of looked at this divide as like we wanted to have like certain prerequisites or reasons that or like things that shaped your pathway in those two years uh, after a foundation year to get to senior year that helped you shape um, the classes, the courses, the internships, the projects, the experiences, and all of that you were going to take. And all of those would lead up to making sure that you would fulfill the prerequisites to being in that particular studio. Again, the studio could be something that was, like, very, those prerequisites were very, very defined in the community of practice, blended, or completely individualized, by which, uh, in that case, you would have to have spoken to your mentor a lot and actually really designed what those prerequisites would be for you to be able to adequately go through uh, a box studio. What's important about this also is how it reflects back on the pathway. So it's not just the definition of what the prereqs are and what the studio outcomes are, reflect back on how you go along that pathway because if these are predetermined then the pathway would be pretty much like you need to take these classes and do these activities. So very much like a major right now versus like a completely really open pathway where since the students sort of come up with this division with the mentor, the pathway and how these things are picked up along the way is also sort of determined with the student. So if you look on a more like micro level of what one specific student's pathway would look like in this new system, they start off in their foundation year. Here you have the skills, knowledge, and dispositions that are deemed necessary the black uh, shapes. And you see their path with the blue line that sort of tells you what they hit and in what order they hit it in. After that, like, 
Um, this is the senior student that they're aspiring to. We take them as like a blended learning option. So they've had some amount of um, autonomy over what to take, and certain things have already been predetermined. So in order to get to that senior studio, they had to fulfill those like five prerequisites. The way to fill those five prerequisites was basically through any of these X, Y, Z experiences that you can see. So getting this competency here and knowledge meant that they sort of like kept building on a particular type or um, particular subject area of knowledge over the course of two years. And again, like reflecting back on the presentation we've given at the midterm, there are different ways that you can build like competencies and build like sort of get these building blocks. And what we're almost hoping on a visual level is that if you are an employer, if you are an administrator, someone just looking at someone's pathway, you can click on any of these building blocks to see like how are you sure that they've actually reached this level to be in a senior stream. And the last thing is sort of understanding that there are, like, uh, again, going back to the idea that there are different ways to fulfill those building blocks. So there are certain things where it's just about like, knowledge packets. And so, oh, there are certain things where it's like an internship where it's mainly about getting the skills. Or there are mixed courses, and then ultimately there's the big studio. So those are the different components in our system. Right. So if we look back all the way to the beginning slide here, so we look at the overall pathways. And taking a little bit of liberty because we're the last group and we have the opportunity to kind of combine a bunch of ideas that we've seen. Um, specifically things such as um, the way that we saw that projects-based learning can be applied to these specific pathways, reaching these objectives. Um, I think that that kind of shows how we envisioned meeting all of these little pieces as we're moving along the pathway. Um, and so our big piece here is, like we said before, the uh, the entire process of the four years, if it remains four years, uh, that's still a little bit of contention there. Uh, but the freshman game experience all the way up to the end studio. But one of the concerns that we've had with this is lateral entry or transfer students. How would you bring someone in halfway through the process? Could you bring someone in halfway through the process? Um, and so initially our response right now is no. That that's really something that's very fundamental to our pathway here is the, the center circle, the initial freshman game, and that incorporates a lot of the values that we place on the university of education far more than specific little um, circles or squares as you're moving along the pathway. Um, and so looking forward, we think <coughs> there might be the possibility that things like incorporating some of the, uh, the project-based learning groups ideas or um, other metrics by how we measure an incoming student, we might be actually better able to incorporate students from a variety of different backgrounds into this model and incorporate more pathways. Um, because, for example, someone that comes in with a lot of AP credit is almost like a transfer student compared to someone that comes in with zero AP credit. And so being able to build a pathway that's unique to each individual and incorporate some things that they have coming in um, distinctly changes the way that we look at the pathway and at least we think improves the overall experience and customizability. Yeah, just, just to wrap up, essentially what what we're trying to do is rethink the college experience around basically the tension between allowing people to explore but also allowing them to focus. And the tension between personalized entrepreneurial learning versus aspiring to be entrepreneurial learning or more standardized learning. And we basically identified three sort of archetypes. So the entrepreneurial students, the semi-entrepreneurial -entre students, and the yet-to-be entrepreneurial students, and trying to sort of find templates or broad frameworks of how they might travel through. Um, the, the neat thing, and to address Randy's point earlier about how our project might fit into the broader thing that all the programs are doing, definitely the, what the work that the common C group is doing will help us basically like not have to deal with what's inside this bubble, because how people qualify and hit these competencies could, could may well mirror how they're designing it. We're more interested really in how people transition from this into this later circles, and how what that process would look like in the three, four, or five years, wherever we can. Yeah. Um, so I'm Jessica Lee. Can I just ask a point of clarification? So I'm just not clear. Are people doing a studio-like thing 
in between their opening game and their senior studio? They could or they could not. So the middle path could be a component of classes, formal lectures and seminars, experiential learning, um, you know, learning by yourself. And so it's, it's these things are as defined. And that it, it's the only thing that we still need to flesh out more, but it's it's going to be something that I said, like similar to what we talked about in our midterm grid, but it's a combination of different modes of learning. So just to make an observation without belaboring this anymore, turn back over to the audience, is what conflates on that <coughs> diagram, which I think is otherwise, you know, is pulling me in, is I can't tell, I don't see where the pathways are, because what the color things look like are actually metrics of your developing skills, knowledge, and dispositions. Those don't look like pathways. So since you're focusing, I think, on pathways, I just don't see the pathways in that yeah. diagram. And maybe they don't belong in that diagram, but I think that that's a, a visual issue. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, Jay, I just go off that a little bit. Um, I, I think one of the things that we're most trying to do is, is have uh, create, create these universal experiences that can define what a Georgian education might be, um, like, like the foundation here, um, while also allowing for um, as we probably focus on a little bit more in our midterm crit, uh, completely opening up what your opportunities are uh, along that way. I, I think one thing that we uh, will add in the future is giving uh, individualized examples of what that might look like. Um, I know we've discussed that before. We, uh, I think it's easily diagrammable. Uh, I think it just, I'm sorry, I'm just making up words at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I see what students are doing in this. What are faculty doing? Because they're not teaching freshmen. I guess they're kind of mentoring senior studios. And those vertical columns, are they just going to operate courses like they usually do? So are they part, doing some part of it will be like exactly that. So part of it will be just professors teaching courses as they normally do. And we don't envision a world where courses would not be a thing at all. Uh, but I think reducing the number of courses they teach would also hopefully free up time for more direct mentoring, which is individual mentoring between professor and student. So because they don't really have to teach, it's not that they don't want to teach freshmen anymore, because we, we envision like certain things happening here could be little lectures by professors and all sorts of things like that. But really, by freeing them up from having to teach the, the, some classes, that gives them a bit more time to spend on individual students and maybe connect them with mentors, all the activities that I think professors really want to do, but really right now are constrained for time and not feeling we also want to make like make clear so we don't see professors as only having just the mentorship or like the teaching roles and we don't see mentorship in the sense of just like you know you sit and get coffee with them and they just like tell you like this is a cool career path um but like our prior project you talked about um a lot to do with like experiences and projects and i think that's why we connect with the project based learning group to see like maybe it's not always that a professor has to be a mentor or someone who's holding the team accountable but they can be part of the team themselves and they can be seen as collaborators and you know that exists in silos right now when you think of like uh, Gurav and like just a few research opportunities that do exist on campus that are again very sought after for students and I think professors also benefit from having additional um, minds working together. So we want to open that up so that professors don't have to sort of choose whether they, you know, they're going to just teach classes and be very like alienated from what's going on in their students' lives or what, whether they just want to be a mentor or we want, you know, we're opening up the space for students to have different forms of learning and for professors to have different forms of engagement. Yeah. Can you define what you mean by entrepreneurship? I don't know if that's a common term in this group, but to me it sounds very strange. Um, so the definition of that would just be... Maybe let's just use the case study of the classroom. Yeah, so, so like, we know that Nandi is like an example of the like entrepreneurial student because she kind of like picked the major that basically allows her to do as many different things that she wants to do as possible while still kind of qualifying under the major. Essentially someone who sort of, who is either open to like new experiences and to explore, but also owns the learning process and is very good at 
reflecting by him or so, charting his own course, and pretty much very good at going out there and doing new things and being by him or so. Versus sort of the absolute on the end of the spectrum is a student who's very good at being told what to do. So walk in, this is my major, these are the set of requirements, I'm gonna hit every single class, I'm gonna do everything that I'm told, and then I'm gonna graduate. Um, and so those are the two sort of end of the spectrum that we can. We wanna design one for the middle ground too, where we think a lot of students are gonna fall into. Which is that I sort of like the structure here, but like there are bits and pieces that I want to add in that's my own. So that's sort of the three archetypes that we're talking about. The importance, uh, and I, think, I can't remember who mentioned it, but on communities of practice at the other end of that spectrum. So there's entrepreneurship where it's you really charge your own course and it's all up to you, but then there's also on the other end of the spectrum is communities of practice where, for example, a pre med student, those requirements are pretty well set in stone. These are the things that you need to accomplish before you're ready for medical school, or these are the things you need to accomplish before you're ready for law school. Um, and so on, on that end of the spectrum, it's not necessarily that we want everybody to be entrepreneurial and chart their own course, but that some people want that very unique, very individualized experience, and some people need that very finite credentialing process. And then we want to envision a system where it can do both, and then have an area right in the middle where you can incorporate pieces from so is community of practice a term you would use for what you were calling a templated experience? Yes, right. Strongly templated experience. Right. So why don't you just consider um, communities of practice, which are templated, highly entrepreneurial, which is very much charted in course, and then like hybrid, as opposed to norming the whole system by entrepreneurial. Like you're very entrepreneurial, you're sort of entrepreneurial, you're really entrepreneurial lane. To be honest, the, so, the, the names we had were not, like, didn't even have the word entrepreneurial in it. We were going with communities of practice, blended, and then and the option was like individualized all level. Um, so it was supposed to be more about like what you envision like the profession and your interests aligning with. So it's less of a statement of your like lack or presence of entrepreneurialism and more just like Sometimes some people have more, I guess, more very, very specific things that they want to do and that makes them the individualized. And there are more some people who like are like, who want to be doctors. And it's okay no matter which one you fit. Yeah, so uh, I think there's just one small differentiating factor there that you could have um, that that if you have someone seeking to <coughs> do what they're told, uh, um, but but not towards an end necessarily. Uh, whereas here, I, I am a college student telling me how to become a college graduate uh, without exactly the, uh, the med school future, the law school future. Uh, I think there, there, there was a general recognition that uh, we should seek to help those with the opportunity to explore, to explore. Yeah, so the idea is that, you know, there are still people come in and say, I want to be a government major, and these are the things I'm going to do as a government major, and I'm not going to consider anything else. And so that's not necessarily a community of practice, because not, that's not yeah. a law of men, or where there are these building blocks you need. It's just that these people, in a way, for whatever reason, just prefer this more rigid pathway. And we're talking about whether or not there's a normative value in actually <coughs> nudging them to, to explore. So, because if the value proposition is that it is valuable to explore, to spend time exploring, then this we have to like somehow incorporate that into the model. And I mean like this is by no way the perfect in the end product. It's just that's sort of the tension that we have as well. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious. So how is this any different than a school other than like a foundation where you're other than a school like Brown where you can go have a major, do your requirements? Or on the very opposite end of the spectrum, so you take every one of your classes, pass scale, and you make up your own thing. Isn't that kind of what they offer? Well, I think of what it is, and I think a lot of this discourse is done into it, like, oh, this is how you can pick your courses. And we're not, like, we're trying to move away from that. Like, there is no mention of a course, like, anywhere within this. Like, where it, courses might be delivery models and certain competencies, but they're not the sole thing. So when you look at Brown, Brown is a great example of, like, maybe like a beta version of what the system is trying to do, where um, you do have a lot more ownership about what you're studying or things like that. But here, we're not even looking at like, oh, you can pick your courses. Like when you look at pathways, pathways aren't just, you know, the mind degree audit that tells you what classes you don't 
when pathways incorporate like everything, and that's why like you know, the learning component comes in. Like pathways include like the academic stuff, they include the professional stuff, they include the social stuff, they include all of that together. And you know, when we talk about like the alumni pathway mapping projects and things like that, like you know, the high points of learning or all like the experiences that really define Georgetown or your like Diamond College aren't necessarily just like courses. So Brown is a great like a uh, precursor, but I think it's limited in its focus of it's just about like how you mix and match courses. Arguably it would be the first step. So if they Georgetown came and said, tomorrow we want to plan of how you're going to implement this starting next year and you're going to progress to some end state, that would probably be the first step because you don't have to tweak a whole lot to get there. Um, but then we're incorporating a whole lot more of uh, the holistic approach, things like um, we talked a little bit more towards the midterm crit about incorporating outside of class experiences, um, uh, more proficiency testing, internships, experiential learning, so that it's not just the courses that we're incorporating here, but it's a whole lot. Last couple comments, things that people think are promising, things that people think are they should work on. Yeah, I like the concept of the foundation here. I'd like to see what that looks like, flesh that a little bit. Yeah, same. Like, I'd like to see what that game is, like, actually consists of in the foundation going against. All right. Have you read Andrew's game? That works with that. It's that. It's sort of that. <laughs>